good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church and School. What a beautiful Sunday to be indoors with air conditioning. Yeah, after last week sweating it out. But uh, last week was awesome out on the field worshiping outdoors with everyone. And just a reminder, the parents did win the first ever inaugural kickball game. Um, we did win the first game. Uh, the kids came back strong in the second game and won that one. And thankfully, only five hamstrings were pulled in the uh, making of that. But uh, what a joy to be back in God's house today. As today, we're going to start our summer series on prayer. <laughs> and each week, we're going to look at petitions and sections of the Lord's Prayer as we look to grow in our prayer life and what that means. And each week, we'll have different challenges for us to grow in our prayer life. So you might be encouraged to pray for someone next to you. Uh, not today. Don't get up and leave, all right? We're going to go through this slowly. But you might be encouraged to go on a walk and pray for homes in your community. But these are things that for us to grow in our prayer life. And so today we get to introduce prayer and the gift that prayer is for us as children of God. But with that, as we're here to worship and pray and praise and give thanks, let's celebrate as we stand and let's greet one another in God's peace and the joy of seeing one another in God's house today. And we continue with the invocation as we make the sign of the cross as Christ redeem, as Christ chosen own, as we make our beginning the power and the presence of God, as together we say in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our songs of praise.
Please be seated as we talk about falling on our knees in prayer and how every hour we need God. Our focus this morning as we continue is on prayer. And so you see we have the catechetical teaching on the Lord's Prayer, which comes from Luther's small catechism. And it's a responsive teaching. And you'll see that these answers are based in Scripture. So we'll just read responsively the bold parts, but I would encourage you to look up these Bible verses during the week and to be encouraged and to see this is God's word speaking to us on the importance of prayer in our life. And each week as we gather, we'll continue through this in the Lord's Prayer for the next eight weeks. And so uh, we look forward to seeing how God grows us in this. And so we start with the question of what is prayer? Prayer is speaking to God in words and thoughts. How does God initiate prayer? God first comes and speaks to us through his word, thus inviting us to respond in prayer. In his word, God commands us to approach and pray, to show how earnestly he wants to help us. Promises to hear our prayers so that we can approach him in confidence gives us the very words that we can use in prayer and that can serve as a pattern for prayer. And what kind of prayers do we find in the Bible? Prayers, prayers take, take the form of confession, confession in which we acknowledge our sin to God, request in which we seek God's help, intercession in which we pray for others, thanksgiving in which we express our gratitude to God for his gifts, lamentation or complaint in which we express our sorrows to God, praise or adoration in which we extol God's wonderful deeds and qualities. And what do all these forms of prayers have in common? In each case, prayer acknowledges that we receive life and all good gifts from God. And how does God answer prayer? God our Father hears the prayers of his children and answers in his own way and his own time. And for what does Jesus teach us to pray in the seven petitions of the Lord's Prayer? The Lord's, the Lord's Prayer, Prayer teaches us to seek all that we need from God. In the first three requests, we pray for things about God. In the last four requests, we pray for our needs, both physical and spiritual. And we continue with the hymn of the Lord's Prayer. Come and 
Our scripture reading for today is based on Matthew chapter 6, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, where he teaches us the Lord's Prayer. Jesus said, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then <coughs> like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of our Lord. All right. Good morning, boys and girls. You excited today? You having a good summer? Yeah. yeah. All right. Today we're talking about prayer. And Jesus' disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, which is a great, great thing to ask, to have God teach us to pray. And that's where Jesus gives us that Lord's Prayer that we just heard from our reading today. But I want to ask you, boys and girls, who taught you how to pray? Who's taught you to pray? Yeah. Your parents? Good. Yeah. What's that? Jesus, right? By saying the Lord's Prayer? Good. Yeah. Your grandma? Nice. Grandma? Good. All right. So now here's the big question. How or what did they teach you? When you pray, what did they tell you to do? What are some things they taught you to do? Yeah. Fold your hands. That's good. Let me ask, why do you think we fold our hands? What do you think? Yeah. Okay, good, because sometimes our hands get distracted with other things. We like to snap or move our hands, so folding our hands. Here's what I like to talk about when we say we fold our hands, because in prayer, we lift our hands. Praise, petition, things we're asking for God. We lift them up to Him. And in prayer, God meets us with His strong hand of, of love and care. And He meets us in prayer. And so we come together in that relationship of prayer. So that's why I like to teach about why we fold our hands. So that's good. What else? What else they teach? Yeah. To close your eyes. Why do we close our eyes? Yeah. Yeah, because it's easy to get distracted when we pray, especially if our eyes are open. So we close our eyes. What else do we sometimes do with our eyes closed? Yeah. Good. You bow your head because you're talking to God. Why do we bow our head? Do you guys know? What, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, you're showing respect because you're talking to God, and it's, it's an amazing that you're talking to the creator of heaven and earth and that God wants you to talk to him, and so we show respect. Anything else? Yeah, good to thank him, to praise him. Isn't it good God wants us to come and praise him? So it sounds like you guys got it down. Now, here's the thing. There's no wrong way to pray. Can you lift your hands and pray? Yeah, right? There's times where I lift up my hands and pray. Sometimes I'm just like, God, what are you doing? Sometimes your parents pray and say, help me, God. And they put their hands up. That's a prayer. That counts as a prayer. Right? So you can lift your hands and pray and praise and give thanks to God. But also, do you ever hold hands together with other people? Yeah. yeah. So I think today, because I know you guys are ready. You knocked this out about prayer and learning. Do you think we can, first of all, I need a volunteer to pray. Can I, all right, you're going to pray for us. And let's see, can you guys all hold, each other, hold hands? Hold hands. See, I knew if I would ask the adults, I don't know if they would be able to do that quite as quickly. <laughs> so that's good. All right, everyone holding hands. Because we're united in our prayers, so this is a way to say we're united in our prayers. So let's pray. So we're holding hands. I need to hold some hands. There we go. Okay. Double hand. Double hand. Let me, there we go. Perfect. All right, here we go. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for helping us. Thank, thank you for helping us. And loving us. And loving us. And caring for us. And caring for us. Thank you. Thank you. For just being so nice. For being so nice. And caring. 
and Karen. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. All right, you boys and girls, Miss Tasha's at the National Youth Gathering, but you can go with Miss Mel. <laughs> Miss, Miss Mel is, is my wife. We've got four kids. You can trust her. Thank you. 
God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you. Amen. Please be seated. Living on a prayer. Yes. Some of you are laughing because, you know, is it, is it Bon Jovi? Yeah. Yes. All right. I, I just asked that to wonder what kind of music you guys listen to. She's <laughs> living on a prayer. Maybe by week eight we'll have a parody to this. I don't know. Oh yeah. Oh, boy. That'd be fun, though, right? A, a Christian parody to living on a prayer. But this summer we want to be people that are passionate about prayer, growing in our prayer life, praying for one another. And isn't it encouraging when you see these kids each week volunteer to pray out loud in front of people? How many of you would like to pray out loud in front of people? None of you are raising your hand. I have the microphone. No, it's not easy to do. I didn't do it until I, I went to seminary. At seminary, they don't teach you how to do that. You just have to do it. So especially when your family knows that you're going to be a pastor, guess who gets to do every single prayer? <laughs> so you just do it. So this summer, we have acronyms. We have all these different ways that we can use to grow in prayer. But really, this is a very profound way for us to grow in our prayer life. And I'm thinking about writing a book about it. But the way you grow in your prayer life is this. Just pray. And that's all the title is going to be in each page. Just pray. Right? Just pray. We, we grow in our prayer life by doing it. And so hopefully today you're encouraged by this because I could have started with all these stats and statistics that one out of two Christians will say that they have a good prayer life. One out of two Christians admit to praying every day. That means there are Christians that don't pray at all during the week. That's not very encouraging. That's not going to help us grow. But let's start with our hearts. Let's just start with a little exercise. I said each week we're going to get out of our comfort zone. So this goes against everything I've ever learned. I'm going to start slow because I wanted to start fast and go you know, out of our comfort zone fast. But we're going to start slow. Spend one minute. Because in Bible study we talked about it, it's hard just to focus and pay attention. We're going to start with one minute. If you want your hands up, your hands folded, your eyes closed, whatever it takes, one minute silently praying to God to search your heart about your prayer life. Ready? Go. All right, that was one minute. Some of you were probably like, wow, that was fast. Other of you were like, wow, that felt like forever. But wow, wasn't that refreshing? So that's what we want to focus on, is the power in prayer. And so we're just going to look through some scriptural examples of prayer. And I could have picked any 20 verses of scripture on prayer and then gave you another 20 and another 20. But I just, I picked a few. And I want to show us this progression of growing in our prayer life. And here's the first one in Psalm 34. David is running for his life because Saul is trying to kill him. And in the midst of his persecution, in the midst of his running, guess what he does? He is going to pray. And he prays, he prays this. He says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The righteous cry out. Brother and sister in Christ, hear this. Your prayer life is not based on your righteousness. It's not about how good you are. It's not about how many these and thous and thous and King James Version you can incorporate into your prayers. All right? That's our reading today. It's not about how eloquent you are. I actually had to work on saying that word, eloquent. 
It's not about anything other than what's in your heart, and then what is in your heart is understanding the relationship that brings you the right to come before a holy, just, almighty God is the righteousness of Christ Jesus himself. The righteousness that Christ has imputed to you and to me, that he put on us through his life and death on the cross, through his blood, through the waters of baptism brought into his family, through the giving of the Holy Spirit and dwelling in our heart to seek God and to ask him and to talk to him. We're not made right because of something we can do or not do. We're made right because of what Christ has done for you to open up the door when you knock. For God to hear your prayer and invite you into this relationship. And he goes on to say this beautiful thing. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. He's close to you. When your heart breaks because you haven't been living in a right relationship with God. And so you haven't talked to him because you don't think you can go back to him. And the cross says, no, you're forgiven and you have access to the Father. When you feel like you're carrying the weight of the world on you and you're crushed in your spirit, Jesus is going to say, lay that at the foot of the cross. Give it to me because I'm with you. He is close to you. Prayer is a close relationship between you and God. A powerful relationship. And so be encouraged that this God wants you to talk to him. He wants you to bother him. How many parents want their kids to bother them all summer? I was going to send my kids to you. No, but this Heavenly Father said, no, bring it all to me every day, every hour if that's what it takes. I want that. I desire that. And keep bringing it to me. So prayer is that right relationship with God. And then we're going to go on to another part of prayer. This is Jeremiah 29, 12. How many of you know Jeremiah 29, 11? For I know the plans I have for you, right? You put that on a coffee cup, plans to prosper, right? Plans for a future. Well, no one wants to put the rest of that context on there because guess what that plan is? You're going to get defeated and you're going to spend 70 years in exile. But look what he says in verse 12. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Remember when we just talked about prayer? That God answers prayer, yes, no, and wait. God answers prayer in his own time, in his own way. Don't you think when Jeremiah said these words, you're going to spend 70 years in exile, don't you think those people's prayer lives probably skyrocketed rocketed through? But God says, no, 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 no. That's not the prayer of your heart. You're praying out of a consequence to be delivered from. I'm going to, in his wisdom, God in his wisdom is going to allow his children to become humble. Prayer is humbling. This is what we didn't talk about with the kids, but sometimes this is why you fall on your knees in prayer. Why you bow your head. Prayer is humbling. God will allow us to go through seasons in life so that our hearts are humble. So is what he ta talks about later in Jeremiah, that he's replacing a heart of stone with a heart of flesh. And so if your prayer life has hit a wall, you have to check your heart because maybe your heart has drifted from God. And God is saying, come back. Seek me. I will hear you. I will be found when you come and seek me with your whole heart. And so here's the challenge this week. The church is open 8 to noon, summer hours, 8 to noon, Monday through Thursday. You can ring the bell, come in, and kneel at the altar and pray to God. The challenge is every person in our church comes and does that this summer. And you don't have to tell anybody. That's between you and God. To get in that habit right? Falling on your knees. Maybe, maybe you do it when you wake up. I can't do it when I wake up because I'll be on my knees for a while. I've got to warm them up a little bit. So at night is when I hit, the, hit my knees on the ground, right? Humbling. God will bring your heart back to him through prayer. And here's a beautiful one. Matthew 11. Jesus says, come to me, 
all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Prayer is rest for your souls. As Christians, this is a beautiful invitation. No other religion in the world talks about this. Every other religion in the world says, fix yourself and come to me. Clean up your mess and come to me. Jesus says, no. The brokenhearted, the crushed in spirit, those who are weary and heavy laden, those who are broken, stressed, depressed, wanting to give up, those are the ones I want to come to me. Completely different than what the world says. Because think about this. If you're going to have a party and you're making a list, who's at the top of the list? The fun people, the people you want to be around. Who's at the bottom of the list? The negative people, right? The people that complain all the time, the people that are stressed out all the time, right? You know those people, you invite them, they're like, hey, we got ice cream cake, and they're like, well, it's 95 degrees, it's going to melt. <laughs> hey, I'm going to the beach today, you want to come? Well, no, it's actually 82 degrees, that's too hot for me, and the sand is too itchy. But Jesus said, no, I want that. I want those complaints. I want what is, what is holding you down, struggling you. Bring those to me, and you're going to find rest. Bring them in prayer. As we said, lay it at the foot of the cross, the song we sung. Give it to him, and you'll find rest for your souls. And he goes on in prayer. Philippians 4, beautiful passage on prayer. Don't be anxious about anything. It ties right into what Jesus was saying. Bring it to him. In every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding of God's your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Holy Spirit interceding in our prayers on our behalf, a divine peace that comes upon us when you spend time with God. We talked about that in Bible study, that your prayer life, when you spend time with God, you're more at peace. You're not so worried. You're not so fearful. You're not so anxious. And in Philippians 4, you get a beautiful blueprint. Prayer, petition, thanksgiving, requests. I'm lifting up my prayer to the one who can change my circumstance and situation. The one who can change my heart. I'm lifting up my petition, asking for God to do what he will. I'm giving him my thanksgiving, and then I'm bringing my requests. All these things that are making me anxious or stressed out or depressed or fearful. And when I give that all to him, there's a peace that transcends, it goes beyond our understanding to continue to guard our hearts and minds in that as we walk forward in faith. And here's the last one. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the help of time and need. Coming before God boldly because Jesus has opened those doors for us through his life and death where grace and mercy is poured out on us. No matter what we're walking through in life, and it's interesting because if we're talking about our prayer life and you're like, I struggle in this and I want to get better, you're in good company. The disciples, the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray, which is really, really important here in Luke chapter 11 because he already taught them the Lord's Prayer in his Sermon on the Mount, which was before. And so the disciples were like, Jesus, teach us to pray. And this is where you got to love Jesus, because if I was Jesus, I'd have been like, well, why don't you go on YouTube and watch my Sermon on the Mount? I kind of taught you there. No. He teaches them again. But the context in which they ask this is important. Luke chapter 10. Jesus sends them out two by two. He says, preach the kingdom of God. Cast out demons. Trample over the enemy. Shake the dirt off feet that don't welcome you and go and preach the gospel. And here's the thing. They didn't even really know what they were doing. The disciples really didn't know. They, they were talking about this kingdom of forgiveness and of Jesus. But it, as we know, they weren't expecting him to die on a cross and rise on the, from the dead on the third day. But they went. And they come back. And they're rejoicing. They're saying, 
the, the demons are cast out, we're trampling over, servant, over serpents and the evil forces, and people are hearing the good news of the kingdom, and Jesus rejoices with them and prays for them and says, Father, thank you for these that you have called, that they are sharing this. And he's like, don't rejoice in that, but rejoice that your name is in the book of heaven and of life, of eternal life. And then the disciple, which no one names, says, teach us to pray. How many of you asked God to teach you to pray in your prayers? Because if I would have just come back from that mission, I would have had a different question. Especially if we're talking about sharing the kingdom and, and, and advancing the gospel in the name of Jesus. I would have been like, hey, Jesus, teach me how to raise the dead. I feel like that's going to be a little bit more powerful. Like if I could raise a dead person, I think more people would start to believe. Or, or Jesus, teach me how to do that bread breaking thing. You know, with a couple loaves and how you got to feed 5,000. You know, teach me to do that. But for as much as we give the disciples grief, they understood that the power to do those miracles came from praying. When Jesus broke those loaves, what did he do first? Prayed and blessed them. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, what did he do? He prayed first. The disciples understood if they're going to be on their mission, they need the power of prayer. Prayer is our greatest weapon against the forces of the devil, the world, and of sin. Prayer is our greatest strength. Prayer is our greatest hope to see the power of God at play and at work in our lives as we fulfill the mission he has called us to. That's why it's so important to be people of prayer. Martin Luther understood prayer. Martin Luther talked about every morning for three hours he would pray before he did anything else. I feel pretty good if I can get three minutes. All right, so if we get to three hours, that's great, but maybe we start with a minute and work our way up in the morning. But Martin Luther had a friend ask him the same question, how do I pray? And so Martin Luther, in a letter that he wrote to his friend, it's called A Simple Way to Pray. And this is his teaching on the Lord's Prayer. So Martin Luther's simple way to pray was just under 20 pages. But this is a part of it. He says, we must be careful not to break the habit of true prayer. See, there's a concentration. There's a habit. Prayer is a habit. Yes, there's times where you lift up prayers randomly, but there is times and places and a habit where you go by yourself, like Jesus went by himself to pray. You have a habit at times where you pray. It says, and become lax and lazy, cool and listless towards prayer. Basically saying, if your heart grows cold toward prayer. Because the devil who besets us is not lazy or careless, and our flesh is too ready and eager to sin and, be, and is disinclined to the spirit of prayer. It's good for us to remember and be taught the importance of prayer, to be encouraged in our prayer life. And Luther goes on, he gives, he gives four points. And his friend was a barber, so you got to love, he's speaking his language. So he's basically saying, just like a barber, you need concentration, right? Because you don't want a barber whose hands are going everywhere and who's looking around everywhere, right? He said, you need concentration. You need focus. That's why we close our eyes, bow our heads. We picture God speaking to us. The second thing is there's a sequence, right? There's a pattern to prayer. As you hopefully saw in Philippians, there's a, a, a praise, a petition, a confession, a supplication. And then third, the heart must be ready for prayer. Part of that prayer is confession, right? Get God put my heart in the right place through the forgiveness I have in Christ to come to you. And then Luther gives a, a, a prayer is like a garland of four twisted strands, which basically those four strands are praise, confession, petition, faith. Those are the four things that go together in prayer. Praising God, who he is, how he's brought us into this relationship, petitions for his will to be done for those around us, confession of us being in the right heart to go forward, and then faith that our God hears us and is with us and is going to continue to lead us for his glory. And so, really, your faith life and your prayer life should go hand in hand, which is why we need to fold them together more. 
So as our prayer life grows, our faith life grows. And so this summer, we're going to be people of prayer. We're going to get out of our comfort zone in prayer. But like I said, we'll start slow. So we're just going to pray right now. After, after we're done talking here, we're going to pray. We're going to start with our prayers for our church, for our school, for our community, and prayers throughout the world. And so here's some prayer requests that we can lift up during this time. And we'll have a time of silence for prayer. But today in our time in prayer, there's special prayers for Adam's grandmothers, uh, for Adam Cruz and the uh, Cruz family as Adam's grandmother passed away earlier this week. So prayers for God's peace to surround them and for them to rest in the promises of eternal life found in Christ. And so prayers for the Cruz family. Um, on our prayer line this morning, we saw um, Paul, Eric, and Desiree Norgard asking for prayers. They know a young wo woman who lives in a different town who is pregnant um, and is feeling pressure from her family to have an abortion. And so we just pray that God's wisdom would fill her mind and his spirit would fill her heart and surround her with people as, as she walks through this, that he will lead her to choose life uh, for this unborn child. And so time to pray for that as well. And then we'll lift up anything else and spend time in silence um, in prayer to God as we find rest for our souls here in God's house and in prayer. And so let us pray to God, our Heavenly Father. Dear good and gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for the gift of today, where we can come and worship and praise you, where we can receive your good gifts, your word, your, your sacrament, your very body and blood, where we receive the gift of the prayer to come together as your children, as brothers and sisters in Christ, to praise you, to lift our petitions for your will to be done in our lives and the lives around us for, for the requests we have for healing and strength, and most of all, God, just for the faith that we know that you are here with us, leading us in our prayer life, and giving us the strength to walk forward in faith in the prayers we lift to you. God, we pray for your church throughout the world. May we continue to stand boldly on your word, to teach your word of what prayer is, but also what faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus is. God, we thank you for this place here at Christ Lutheran, for our church and school, where we can pray together freely, where we can encourage one another with, with the words of prayer and lift one another up in prayer. God, we pray that during this summer we grow in our faith life, that we grow in our faith and love for you and our love and care for one another, and that we grow in our prayer life as individuals but also as the body of Christ. Good and gracious God, we, we pray for our world, for our nation especially, that leaders lead with wisdom and justice. We pray for those who protect our freedom, for all of our firefighters, police officers, first responders, for all of our military, for all the men and women that serve God, we pray that you keep them safe and be with their families and comfort them. And good and gracious God, good physician, great physician of body and soul. We lift up today those who are hurting from any physical illness, mental complication, financial complications, or any grief or distress or depression, or, and we just, any anxiety, God, we, we come and we lay those into your hands right now. God, we pray for a young woman who is in a tough spot. We pray that your, your loving wisdom would be with her, that those around her would encourage her with the life that, that she has within her, and that she would choose life, and that she would find people that will not only pray for her to walk with her during this time. God, we pray for the Cruz family as Adam mourns the loss of his grandmother and the family, remembers the life that you have given her, God. We pray that you surround them with your comfort and your peace and point them toward the promise of eternal life and that not even death can separate us from the love in Christ Jesus and the love we have as one another in Christ. And dear Lord, search our hearts as we just lift up anything else that is in our heart to you right now.
we pray all of these things in Jesus' name, the name above every other name. Amen. We continue as we say the Lord's Prayer together, and as we say the Lord's Prayer together, we'll stop at, after each petition for a brief time, so that way we don't just rush through this, but we want to take time and reflect on each part of the Lord's Prayer, and so we'll pray this together with a pause, and we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to please stand as we confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And together we confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And my friends, we continue to prepare our hearts to receive the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus as we have our time of confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse our thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we take a moment to silently confess those sins in our heart and lay that at the foot of the cross right now. And most merciful God, we confess, confess that, we that we are in bondage to sin, sin and cannot free ourselves. We have, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And my friends, hear the good news. Almighty God, in his mercy, has sent his Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to die for our sin, and for his sake, forgives us all of our sin. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, I invite you to hear these words of Jesus, that all of your sin is forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come in the presence of Jesus to receive his true body and his true blood through the bread and with and under the bread and wine in this sacrament for the forgiveness of sin and strength to live that new life God has given us. 
And so on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given to you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood. Shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated for distribution.
this robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air farewell farewell sweet hour of prayer And now may the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in his joy and in his peace. Amen. Amen. As we go forth today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Amen. And we sing our closing song. announcements today as we continue our summer a lot to look forward to next week July 17th we have uh, Samantha Redman our teacher for fourth grade her installation which means she's being installed as a called worker which is a big deal uh, it's, it is next week and so the installation and commissioning for Samantha is going to be a time of celebration and so that's going to be part of the service uh, and so there'll be some people here from uh, Concordia as well, from, as well as from our districts, other pastors from our district to, here, to be here to celebrate 
uh, with her during our worship service next week. And then following service, following service also is our voters meeting, our annual voters meeting. Um, this is where we get an update on the budget for the upcoming fiscal year, as well as a recap. So uh, continue to pray for our leadership, our ministry council, and a big thank you to all of our ministry council, um, especially Bob Galvin, the one who puts all the numbers together and has 50 uh, pages of Excel spreadsheets for um, everything. So thank you for keeping all those numbers together. But God has been... Um, really good to us and we've been uh, blessed here and continue to be a blessing to others especially the past few years considering everything that has gone on um, so he'll share some of those highlights I won't steal your thunder but it's very exciting it's gonna be hard for me to do so I gotta move on but next week come and he'll update you on some of the things this past year and why it's so exciting um, also July 17th uh, as you know uh, Miss Tasha has accepted our call uh, to be the DCE here. So July 17th is her official last day as intern. Um, so we'll also be thanking her and then uh, actually forcing her to take some time off before officially becoming a DCE. So she'll be um, out for a couple weeks before officially becoming um, our DCE, but our installation for her will be in August as well. Um, and just to also to point out the great things God is doing here in answering prayer, our eighth grade teacher made it all the way from Hawaii uh, and is uh, settled in. Mr. Brad Rorick, if you will wave your hand or there you go. Yep, good to have you here. I think you said you and I have to go pack up some things at your place in Hawaii and this week and we'll come back in two weeks. Okay. Um, and then also the women's walk. So July 16th, a great opportunity for uh, the ladies here to gather. And that women's walk will be at 8 a.m. at Point Vincent. Um, or if you have questions, you can see Natalie Mills about that as well. So God's blessings. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's so great to see you. Uh, look forward to, if you're here this week, please come and pray. Or if you want someone to pray with, uh, we'll be around. But God's blessings on your week. Such a joy an honor to serve and to pray and to walk with you on this journey. And we look forward to seeing you soon. God's blessings.